Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. And now, Superman, champion of the weak and the oppressed, strange visitor from interplanetary space who has arrived on Earth to fight for the cause of justice. And in his disguise as Clark Kent news reporter, to investigate the ways and lives of men. When we last saw him, Kent was one of a small group made up of the ambulance surgeon, the fire chief, a photographer from the Daily Planet, and the half-hysterical unknown girl whom Kent, as Superman, had just rescued from the blazing inferno of the Sterling Tower. As she was borne off to the ambulance, the girl broke into wild, delirious cries of, Stop them! Catch them! Catch them! And then lapsed again into unconsciousness. Today, as our story continues... Kent is waiting in a reception room of the hospital, hoping that the girl, whose identity is still unknown, will recover enough to tell who she is and throw light on the mysterious origin of the fire, which authorities are convinced was purposely set. But meanwhile, as Kent waits in the reception room, a powerful black sedan speeds through the night, far out of town on a highway for the west. Two men are tense in the front seat. One holds the wheel while the other nervously turns the dials of the car's radio. Listen. Watch it, Bart. Curve coming up. I'm not blind. I can see it. Hey! You have to do that. Listen, Joe. The more miles we put between us and the Sterling Tower, the better. And the quicker, the better, too. You think it's all over? Certainly it's all over. They'll never even find her. Let alone catch on about us. What are you doing with that radio? Picking up the late news. Oh, what's the matter? Worried about your investment? We might hear something. Well, I can tell you one thing. North Star Mining went down. <laughs> about 20 floors down. Ah, uh, don't be so funny. Yeah, and if that girl had ever got out with her story, it'd be lower than that. And us along with it. And at the moment, on all fronts, there are no further developments. Locally, interest still centers on the mysterious fire which destroyed the Sterling Tower early today. This is it. Listen. Fire department officials are waiting to explore the ruins. To confirm suspicions, the fire was of incendiary origin. What's that? Stop the car. Pull up. Unfortunately, the only victim of the fire who can throw light on this angle is a former secretary employed by the North Star Mining Company. What? Company offices of the North Star Mining Company were on the 20th floor of the tower where the fire started. But the girl escaped under mysterious circumstances. She is now in a critical condition at the city hospital. Escaped? She couldn't have. It's not possible. Representatives of the district attorney's office are waiting to question the young secretary if and when her condition makes it possible. Question? Why? You hear that? Meanwhile, Metropolitan Police are searching for two of the mining company's chief executives who have mysteriously disappeared. Bartley Pemberton, company's president, and Joseph Deneen, treasurer and vice president in charge of operations, both of whom are wanted for questioning. If they... Come on, why don't you shut it off? You want to hear the rest of it? I heard enough, Joe. More than enough. Hey, Bob, where are you going? What are you turning around for? Where am I going? Where do you think I'm going, you fool? But you're turning back. You bet I'm turning back. Right back where we came from. But you're crazy. we got to get away. We can't get away. Not now. Not till we fix that girl so she can't squeal. Where did the guy say? City hospital? Well, what are you going to do? Now listen, Joe, pull yourself together. You're in this just as much as I am. I know, but... A couple of that girl's relatives, her cousin and her old uncle, that's you and me, are going to call on her the minute she's well enough and see her alone. We can't. They'll get us. Wait, Bob. Wait, nothing. We've got to get to her before she sees the DA. Now hang on. Hospital sure does a rushing business in doctors. Hello there, nurse. Hello, Mr. Kent. Still waiting around? Oh, sure. I haven't anything else to do. Well, you're all alone now. Huh? What do you mean? Well, the man from the district attorney's office gave it up. Oh? He said to call him when the girl wakes up. How is she, nurse? Think she'll pull through all right? She's pulled through already. He was just shock and smoke. Well, then why can't I see her? Well, she's still a little upset. She woke up a while ago and said something about a car and some men. A car? 
Yes, I think that's what it was. I'd have called you, but she dropped off again. I thought she needed her rest more than you did your interview. Thanks, nurse. My pal. So she talked about a car, eh? Yes, and two men. Say, where are you going? Oh, just out on that sun porch. Get a little air. Now, listen, that sun porch is open. You'll catch your death of cold. Oh, no, no. I, I like the cold. Well, all right. Suit yourself. You've probably got at least an hour, but whatever you do, don't leave that door open. I won't. <sighs> She's right. It is cold. And what's a little thing like cold to Superman? I knew I'd find out something if I hung around here long enough. Two men in a car, eh? Not much to go on, but I have an hour or so to look. Two men in a car. And if they had anything to do with that fire, they're heading away from town. I wonder if they're the officers of that North Star Mining Company, Pemberton and Deneen. Well, if I catch up with them, I'll soon find out. Here we go. What? What's the red lights? Don't want to get us picked up now, do you? Shut up and keep your head. We're turning in at this parking lot. Where's the hospital? Right around the corner. I'll ask the attendant to make sure. Here he comes. Evening, gentlemen. Okay, Mac. How much to park? Fifty cents for the first hour. Dime for every hour extra. We won't be over an hour. Oh, uh, where's the city hospital? Uh, straight down the avenue. First block to the right. You can't miss it. Don't worry. We won't miss it. Yeah, we won't miss her either. Come on, it's later than I thought. We'd better step on it. What if the DA got there first? We'll worry about that when we have to. Remember now, I'm her uncle and you're her cousin who she hasn't seen for days. All set? Listen, are you sure we Come got... on, don't get chicken-hearted. Make it good. Short and snappy. Okay. No luck. Looked into 500 cars and haven't found a thing. Either that girl was raving or they slipped by me in the dark. Huh. Wait, there's a car coming up the road with two men in it. I'll drop down. No time to become Clark Kent. Here they come. I'll stand in the middle of the road. Oh. They're not going to stop. They're swerving, but I'll stop them. No. Ah. Hey, what? It's a police car. The last people in the world I want to meet right now. Hey, you, what's the big idea? You're trying to wreck us? Hey, come back! Pass, he's playing! Up in the air! Plug him! Plug him! Nice shooting, officer. One of those bullets bounced off my chest. Sorry, I can't wait to explain. Gotta get back to that hospital. Wasted enough time. That girl's probably ready to talk now. So long. Back to the city. Mr. Kent, are you still wait? Oh, my goodness, where is he? Are you looking for me, nurse? My lands, don't tell me you've been out on that porch all this time. Oh, why not? Well, it's over an hour. Aren't you frozen? Oh, not me. I like it. What about the patient? Is she awake? Oh, yes. She even has some visitors. Visitors? From the district attorney's office? Uh, no, a couple of relatives. Relatives? I didn't know she had any. Well, evidently she has. An uncle and a cousin. And they're with her now? Well, they really shouldn't be, of course, but they were so anxious and they wanted to see her so badly that I, I stretched a point and let them in. How long have they been with her? Just went in. Well, what's the matter? Nurse, let me go in and talk to them. You? Why, I should say not. Please, nurse. Not until the doctor says it's all right. Now, look, nurse, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put your picture in the paper. How's that? You can't do that. I will, I promise. A picture and a, a nice little story. How about it? Well, well, you stay here till I call you. I'll see how she is. Two relatives. This is the first time they show up when the girl's been here over 12 hours and every paper in town's full of the story. Something mighty queer about this. <coughs> what the? Somebody screamed. The supervisor. Where's the supervisor? Call Dr. Peters, quick. Orderly. Orderly. Which way do they go, Miss King? Dr. Peters, where are they calling somebody? Hey, what's going on? What happened? Say, mister, two men. They were in one of the rooms. Anybody go through here? No, I haven't seen a sign of them. Hey, wait. What did they do? Nurse says they stabbed a girl. Hey, there. Stabbed hey. a girl? Hey. Nurse. Nurse, where are you? Oh, Mr. Kent, those men. They weren't her relatives. They went into her room and stabbed her. Stabbed her? The doctor. Miss Gray, where's, the, where's Dr. Peter? Nurse, how badly is she hurt? Is she dead? I don't know. She's unconscious. Miss Gray, come in here and help quickly. Oh, thank heaven, Dr. Peter. Yes. Doctor. Yes, right away, nurse. Mm. 
Daily Planet, rewrite desk. Listen, this is Clark Kent calling from City Hospital. Now get this, Max. Okay, Kent, shoot. It's about that girl they rescued from the Sterling Tower fire. She's in the City Hospital accident ward, and a couple of alleged relatives got by the nurse and to her room. Relatives, okay. Only they weren't relatives. Nobody knows who they are, but they got into the girl's room and stabbed her. So far, the extent of her injuries is not known. Not known. Listen, is she dead or isn't she? Well, Mac, I don't know. Well, find out, Kent. Find out and call back as soon as you can. I'll wait right here by the phone and hurry, will you? This sounds like you've made it. Have Deneen and Pemberton, the two crooked owners of the North Star Mining Company, sealed their former secretary's lips forever? And why were they willing to risk arrest? in order to get her out of the way. There are startling developments yet to come, thrilling adventures in which Clark Kent and Superman play a major part. Don't miss the next sensational installment of Superman. Tune in with us next time and follow the exciting transcription, Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine.